Hey, howdy. So recently, there was a snapshot released for Minecraft, and it carried with it a very monumental change. Probably the most monumental change we've gotten for Minecraft commands in a long time. Macros. First off, let's discuss the basics. What the heck is a macro? Well, it's a new functionality of functions that allows Minecraft's backend to replace keywords with numbers, strings, and other data before the command properly runs. Basically, the system will do two passes. If it detects that a function is a macro, it will run through and check the data that's been fed into it and the keywords that are provided, and if they match, it'll replace the keyword with whatever variable you've specified. Otherwise, it will refuse to run, and it will either it will either silently fail or it will fail and output something to the to the um, chat. Now, anyone who's ever done in-depth work with commands will tell you that this is an insanely useful addition to the game. And I'm here to tell you that those people are right. Sorta. We'll get there. But for now, let's write some code for a basic example to showcase how this even works. So, best way to show it off is with this function right here. Let me zoom out a little, or actually, let me turn on the word wrap. Okay, that's that's like basically readable. Uh, I'm a professional, I swear. Okay, there we go. So, this is the meat and potatoes of what a macro actually is. This is all one line, don't worry, I just have a word wrap turned on, and I have the text size up so that it's actually easy to see. So, in order to denote a macro, you have to start the line with a dollar sign. This also unfortunately means that you cannot use macro lines in chat, you can only use it in functions. And then you write the rest of the command as you normally would, summon zombie with some NBT. But anytime that you want to replace anytime that you want to use that keyword, you use another dollar sign, parentheses, and then a keyword. In this case, I use the keyword name. Now, if I pop on over into Minecraft real quick, let me set the time to night so that the zombie doesn't burn. And if I attempt to run the function summon named zombie, it won't actually run. Missing arguments to function summon named zombie. So let's give it let's give it arguments. Let's name it Bob. And there you go. I can name it whatever I want. I can name it. Jeb. I can name it just some random gibberish and it will work with that too. The important thing is that this lets me just write text here outside of the outside of the command itself, and it will dynamically replace text within the command with code that I want to have happen. Now, this is unbelievably helpful like more than words can describe. A lot of these sorts of operations were completely impossible before this point. You could store the string in data storage and replace the mob's name with the custom name right after it spawned in, but it was impossible for it to dynamically integrate into the command itself. Now, that's already really, really, really powerful. I'm sure you can imagine some examples of things you can do with just that, but it gets better. There is a little dandy thing called data storage. And I already have a bunch of stuff loaded in. I think temp is, yeah, temp is loaded. There's like, like letter also has some content. In theory, you could feed this into functions. And that opens up so many more possibilities. Just imagine that. Well, not so fast. There's a bit of a hurdle that we have to overcome first. So let's say that I wanted to use this letter. Well, how I would do it is instead of using these brackets, I would do with 
let's go to the storage, boondandalin storage, and then it was a letter. Now notice this error, invalid argument type string, expected compound. So what's happening here, it's, it's hard to tell when you're first doing this. It took me like a few hours to really nail down why this was happening and how I can fix it reliably. What it wants to see is something in the realm of this. We need to somehow take that, take that information and process it so that it operates like so. So, what I've done over here is I have set up a sort of weird back function. What is a back function? I don't freaking know. A weird like secondary function. And if I do execute as at e type equals creeper and at s run function disp health health equals let's go with 10. It'll display health as 10. Now, it doesn't actually have 10 health. It still takes two swings like normal. But what if I wanted that to change dynamically with the health of the mob? It's not as simple as just plugging in that number. We have to do something a bit more in depth. Let me zoom it out so that the... Ooh, hello, that's way too much. Uh, this is good enough. So... These, these sort of operations are broken up into four broad strokes. The first thing that you are required to do, if you want to do this, is get the health, because obviously that's what we want to base it off of. The next step is to create a blank and a blank compound with that keyword that we need, health colon zero. The third step is to take that value of formatted.health and set its value equal to that health value that we grabbed earlier. At this point, supposing that the creeper has a health of 20, this compound will now read health colon 20. And now we take this compound and plug it into the health function like so. So now, if I go into the main and I do execute as at e type equals not player at at s run. Hang on. Could cheat a little bit. Use health. This should work as I want it to. There we go. It's now dynamically changing the health of the creeper. Now, just like the other thing, this was damn near impossible to do without a lot of grinding. Like you could, you could make it manually determine what the number would be based on the health, but there was a bug in the game for the longest time, and I think it's still in the game, where if you give a mob a custom name that involves a scoreboard, the scoreboard wouldn't update properly. And now we have a handy little backdoor that lets us do it much more efficiently and a lot easier. But there is a bit of a problem. Backdoors usually take longer to reach, which leads me to the problem of time and space. Like I said before, each macro essentially runs twice, once to replace the variables and again to run the newly created function. Because of this, you have to be a little mindful of their use, especially with cases like I was doing over here, where it runs every single tick. If you have too many of these running at once, especially if they're macros, it's going to cause a lot of server-side lag, so be mindful of that. To close out the video, I'll end with one more example of something that used to be much, much harder to do before the introduction of this new technology. Suppose for, an, for a moment that you have a big array, and this array has 26 entries, one for each letter of the alphabet. And you wanted to create a function that would return the value at position i. 
For instance, if I were to enter 4, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, it would return E. 24, I'm not going to count all the way over, but that's uh, it's actually 25. It's decremented by 1 because arrays are fun like that. It would return Y. In order to do this before, you would basically need to write it out 26 different times of if the value was 1, if, if the value is 0, then you return the value at 0. If it was 1, you return the value at 1, etc., etc. It was really clunky. And now we have a handy new way of doing it, where we have this new function that I created num to letter that takes the, let's see if I remember, it was that letter thing that I was using earlier and it sets its value from letterbox.array macro index. So using a dynamically changing index variable, we get that value in the letterbox array. And then I have another function down here that takes that takes that value and just prints it to the to the chat. So I'll reload just for posterity's sake, and I'll do function num to letter. Let's do index equals zero. The letter returns is A. And then we try index of seven, returns H. Index of uh, let's go to 15, it's a P. P, Q, hang on. P, O, O, N. This is a lot harder than it usually is because of the um, because everything's uh, decremented by one. A L Damn it. Now, <laughs> crash and burn. Where's that? There you are. There's the end, finally. <laughs> Today on things I didn't realize I didn't know, the alphabet. With this new system, you, what you could also do is just run this through the new random function which I might make a video covering this as well, but it's a lot more simple. You could just have it roll a random number between one and 26, or I guess get a value from one and 26. It would get a three, three would get punched into here, and it would return D, or I guess one, a zero to 25. With the, the, There's so many freaking possibilities with this. It's so, it's incredible. It's incredible. I love this. This is the, my favorite, my favorite uh, snapshot in Minecraft that has been released in a really long time. Regardless, I think I've covered macros in enough detail that's necessary. If anyone has questions, feel free to ask me in the comments. That's about all I got, though, though. Though, though, yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching.